Hello, my name's Stephen Reeves. I'm the upgrade facilitator here at Tawny Town, Arkansas for PAM Transport. Today I'm going to walk you through a complete pre-trip and what we expect when we're upgrading students and what should be done every time you do a pre-trip. We start here at the front of the truck. When you approach the truck, you want to look and make sure that the truck is sitting level, that it's not leaning one way or the other. That would be an indication of some kind of problem with the tires or the suspension system itself. Look underneath the truck, make sure there's no leaking fluids, oils, or anything coming from the engine compartment that could indicate a major problem or could get you in trouble for leaking hazardous fluids. You wanna look at the front of the truck, starting from your headlights, make sure that your headlights are clear, they're attached properly, there's no cracks in the lenses and that the headlights are of a clear color and the emergency flashers and turn signals are abnormal. You also want to look up at the top on your five running lights at the top of the truck. Make sure they're well attached, secure, and of amber. You want to also look at your mirrors and make sure that your mirrors are attached. They're clear. Check your uh, running light on the front corners of your, of your hood to make sure they are of amber color and they are operating properly. You want to look at the windshield, make sure there's no cracks. You also want to make sure it's clean and ready to be used. Check your windshield wipers, make sure they're properly attached up front. At this point, we're going to go into the engine compartment. Clear. Okay, we're going to start on the right side of the engine compartment. At this juncture, what we're going to do is we're going to look at your coolant, your coolant reservoir, make sure it's properly attached and secured, it's filled to the proper level, the cap is tight. You're going to go down, check all the hoses and connectors. On this side of the truck, especially this, you want to go down, you want to check that your water pump is secured and that uh, the belt is of the proper tension. On this side of the this Peter belt, you're not going to get a chance to test the, the flexibility of the belt or see it properly until we get to the other side. This is your air intake system, goes into your exhaust system. This is your turbo. You want to make sure there's no exhaust leaks along that. No soot is being blown out. All the connectors are properly fastened. You want to come down, you want to look at your frame, your spring hangers, your leaf spring, your U-joints that connect it to the, fret, to the uh, cross rails. You want to make sure that all the bolts are secure and there's no cracks, no welds. Check your shock absorber. Make sure your shock absorber is not leaking no missing, no bolts, no nuts. Then we're going to come over to the tires. You want to check your tires on all three sides to make sure that there's no bulging, no cuts, no abrasions. The depth of the front tires needs to be no less than 4 30 seconds of an inch. Also, the front tires on these trucks, on the steer tires on these trucks, these tires have to be new tires, or what we call virgin tires. They cannot be recaps. That is not allowed by DOT rules. We'll look in here on side for the brake chamber. These Peterbilt 4579s have disc brakes. The brake chamber needs to be securely fastened. Your air hose to your brake chamber needs to show no wears, no cuts, no abrasions. Your ABS line, make sure it's secured. You're going to look on the inside of the wheel to make sure that there's no obstructions, no leaking oil, or anything coming out of the seals. With this being bra disc brakes, it's hard to see your brake pads and your calipers unless you take the wheel off. Now also, then we're going to go down to the rim of the tire. Okay, the rim shows no cracks, no illegal welds, all the lug nuts are securely tightened. There's no sign of any, of any uh, 
rust marks are leaking, no metal on the threads, they are properly secured. Come down to your hub oil, okay? It's imperative that this plug is in there and that the chamber is full of lubricant. Otherwise, what will happen is you'll end up with a wheel hub burning up or wheel bearing burning up. Now, at this point, we're going to go to the other side of the engine. Okay, this is where you can check your belt tensions. That the belt is not frayed, it's not torn, and it has no more than three quarters of an inch play. You check your alternator. Make sure all the lines are properly connected. You go and you check your reservoir for your windshield wiper fluid. Make sure it's filled and it's properly secured. Then you come down here to your, your power steering reservoir. Make sure it's filled to the proper level. All the hoses are connected, showing no sign of chafing, tearing, any cuts or abrasions. Make sure it's filled to the proper level. Then what you'll do is you'll come down to your steering system. Your steering gearbox, your pitnam arm, your drag link, your steering knuckles, they should be secured with castle nuts and the castle nuts should be, cure, be secured with cotter pins. Check to play in your steering column. Make sure that there's no excessive play it's clear of any debris or any obstructions and it's properly lubricated. Check your oil. Pull the dipstick, check the oil level. If it's needing oil, the filler cap for the oil. You want to check the spring hangers here, the U bolts and the nuts, that they're properly secured. Again, the shock absorber, the leaf spring, Make sure everything is safe and intact. And you would check this tire the same you would with the other side. It's got to be 4 30 seconds of an inch, no less. No abrasions, no cuts on the three sides. Your brake chamber is properly secured. There's no leaking, there's no oil, there's no debris inside the drum of the tire. Again, the rim shows no signs of cracks or welds. The lug nuts are on securely, no sign of any loose lug nuts like rust streaks, shiny threads. Again, the hub oiler, make sure that it's properly filled and secured with the plug. Your air compressor to your truck. Now on the 579s, it's kind of hidden from your view. It's back here and it's gear driven air compressor. Power steering pump, power steering pump is right back here. Follow the hoses. Power steering pump is back here, but you cannot really get a visual on it because of the fact that the frame is in the way. Check all of your framing. Make sure there's no cracks, no welds. All the bolts are secure. Check all your air lines up that lead to your dash, up to your valves, up to your air valves, that they're all secured. No chafing, no cracked or bent are broken lines. From there, we're going to go back to the driver's area. Here, you want to check your door. Make sure that it opens properly, it closes properly. The side mirrors are properly attached, clear, no broken, no illegal stickers on the mirrors. Check the hinges on the inside of the door. Make sure that they are properly secured and tight and that that they operate functionally. Check the inside handle on the door. Make sure it will open. Okay? The seals on the inside of the door. Make sure those are attached and not torn loose. Up to date. Come to the steps. The steps must be properly secured. No missing nuts or bolts. They must be clear of any obstructions, and they have to be able to bear the driver's weight. The battery box. Okay, make sure all the connection, electrical connections are tight and secure. 
there's no erosion or corrosion, excuse me, and that uh, there's three things you want to check for in the battery box. It's called S, S, and L. Smell, swell, and leakage. The batteries, if you come outside or you smell a strong sulfur smell like rotten eggs, that's an indication you have a battery going bad. You need to have it replaced. The batteries are square. If you see them bulging or soiling in any way, that's an indication you have a bad battery. These batteries are sealed batteries, but they do have ventilation slots. If you see any liquid coming up through those slots or running down off the batteries, that's an indication you have a bad battery and you need to get it replaced. Also, you don't want that leaking out of there onto the roadway because it's sulfuric acid and it is considered a hazardous chemical. Okay, we'll secure the battery box. We'll come to the back part here. This is where the safety equipment resides in here. Fire extinguisher inside. Open this up. Check. Make sure you got a proper fire extinguisher. It's fully charged and it's securely fastened and secure. You're also going to have your triangles. Three little reflective triangles should be in here as part of your safety equipment. And in this truck, you have your extra fuses that are in the side box. If they're not in the side box, check the glove compartment of the inside the truck. They may be in there, but make sure you have these before you leave there. Because you never know when you're gonna lose a fuse and it's DOT regulation that you have extra fuses for every fuse in this truck. With that done, we're gonna look at the def tape, the lid on the def tape. Make sure it's tight, comes on and off easily, it secures easily. It's got the rubber gasket to keep it secured. We'll go back to the fuel tanks. The fuel tanks have straps on them to make sure that they're properly secured. You wanna to check to make sure there's no leakage, the tanks are properly secured, mm -hmm. and that the straps that go around the tank have a rubber gasket that goes there to keep any kind of metal to metal contact. Metal to metal contact will rub a hole into the fuel tank and cause a leak. Make sure the cap's secured, it's got a rubber seal, it's also got a chain that keeps the, the uh, lid on the vehicle. At this juncture you're going to look at the back of the truck. You're going to see that it's got reflective tape which is required at the two top corners. You also have work lights. You have your air system here. You have your air lines. They need to be properly secured. They must not be drag on anything. They must not sit on the catwalk or, or drag on the fuel tanks. Make sure that there are no chafing, no bare wiring, or no holes or no cuts in these air lines. You have your electrical box here. This this puts the electrical power from the truck into the trailer for the lights. This must be clean. It must be secure. There should be no pins missing from the power box in here. No, no broke uh, pins or anything like that. Otherwise, you can have a malfunction of the electrical system on the trailer. Okay, the catwalk. The catwalk is important. They should bear the driver's weight should be clean of obstruction, should be secured, no missing nuts, no missing bolts. Inside here, you'll look down, you want to check the framing, you want to check the spring hangers, you want to check the attachment for your splash guard, you want to check all your airlines. You have multiple airlines coming up in here that run back, to the tra back through the trailer and they also help operate the fifth wheel. Down here you have your drive shaft. Examine your drive shaft. Make sure that the, the universal joints are clear of any obstructions. It's intact, there's no 
broken nuts, bolts, and no cracking of the drive shaft itself. You want to look in here, you have, you have spring hangers, you have airbags, and you have your brake cylinders for your front tires. You need to check those, make sure they're all secure, all tight, no broken lines, and no obstructions. Now the tires. The later models of the 579 that we have have these wheel covers. Do not think that you can't remove them. You need to remove them. You need to check the wheel seals on the back. You do so by pushing the pin, rotating, and they'll release. Here, you can look at your axle seals. Make sure that it's secured. All the bolts that are holding the axle seal and the axle cover are secure. You can check your lug nuts. Make sure that they're all secured. No, no loose nut lug nuts. Your air valve, your valve stem, make sure it's clear, secure, you can get to it. Your rim, secure, no cracks, no welds. Now, you need to take on these dual tires, you need to also inspect down between them, what's known as the spacer. You must make sure that they're clear of any kind of debris, that the, the uh, rims are tight together, there's no, no gaps or anything between the rims themselves. And like I say, clear debris, any kind of garbage or anything in there. Also look down, see if you see any leaks, any kind of lubricant leaks. That could be an indication that you have an inside wheel seal going bad. You check this one the same you would with that one. Back, spring hangers, your airbags, your shock absorbers. Now, these airlines also have what's known as grommets inside of them. That's what keeps the system sealed and keeps the air from leaking out. Make sure they're there, they're intact, they're not cut, they're not torn, and they fit securely on the glad hand connector. Okay, we're gonna look at the front of the trailer at this point, what's known as the bulkhead. We wanna make sure that it's secure. There's no loosing, loose rivets, no missing rivets, it, and it's tight. We wanna look for our clearance light at the top of the trailer, make sure it's there, it's secure, and it's operative. Also, these trailers gotta go through an annual inspection. Make sure that the sticker inspection sticker is on the trailer and it's up to date check your check your nose box make sure that you have the registration of the trailer in there make sure you have the inspection report for this trailer if you're ever stopped they'll ask you for the registration and the inspection report for the trailer make sure you have it if you don't get a hold of operations and get copies sent to you We're gonna go down the side of the trailer. As you notice on the trailer, it's got reflective tape. DOT regulations state that this must have at least 50% reflective tape down the side of the trailer. We're gonna go here to the coupling system. You need to look, you need to check the apron, the trailer apron, the kingpin. You need to check the kingpin slide that the teeth are secured. You must check the release arm, make sure that the release arm is set and the safety latch is latched. You also wanna get a visual from behind the, behind the kingpin to make sure that it is properly coupled. You will also check the coupling of this trailer when you get inside and you do your do your in cab, you're gonna to have to do a tug test to make sure that that's there. The one thing you don't want to do is have that trailer fall off because it was not properly secured. Back here, you're gonna check for your mud flaps, your DO tape on your mud flap holders. You're gonna check your 
lights on the back. You got you got your turn signals, you got your brake lights, and then you have a backup light there. You want to make sure that the the uh, brake lights and flasher lights are red and that the backup light is white. Like I say, at this point you want to get up there, you want to also do a eye witness check of that kingpin to make sure that it is securely within the locking jaws and locked. We're going to go back. We're going to go back to our landing gear. You want to make sure that the landing gear is fully functional. Your arm to look lower and raise your landing gear. You need to make sure that all the hardware is on that crank arm. Otherwise, you won't be able to get this fully road road operational. Make sure that the cross members are intact, not missing any bolts or nuts. Make sure the shaft that goes clear to the other side is secured, not missing any nuts or nuts or bolts. The shoes, the shoes, make sure they're clear of debris. Debris inside those shoes can fly off and do damage to other vehicles, which is not a good thing. Your cross members on your trailer, you need to examine those. Make sure that there's none cracked, broken. All these bolts right here fasten the cross members to the trailer to the floor of the trailer. Make sure that there's none missing. If there's any missing or have been ripped off or loose, you need to get them repaired right away. Any kind of flexibility inside and, inside and on those cross members will cause a problem with the structure of the trailer floor. Check them. Cross members. Coming back to the side light of the trailer. Make sure it's fully secured of the proper amber color and it's fully operational. You'll have your four-way, your turn signal, and your running light all through this on the side. Okay, we have a whole airline system that runs from the front of the trailer to the back of the trailer. It's secured with tension springs. These airlines must be 18 inches minimum from the surface of the road. Underneath here, we have our slide rail, our locking pins to our fifth wheel release. This is an air rag trailer, so it has an air release system on the, on the tandems. Now you want to get down here, you want to get under here, you want to check your brake drum, your whole suspension system, your shock absorbers, your cross members, your torsion bar. You're wanting to make sure that there's no audible air leak brake chambers. Now these are standard air brakes. They're going to have push rods. They're going to have slack adjusters. The rule is one to one and a quarter inch play when the springs have been, when the air has been released, or when the, when the brakes have been uh, released. Now that's going to change because uh, some trailers have longer stroke bars than other. Uh, so Rule is only a certified mechanic can adjust the slack adjusters on here. They should have automatic slack adjusters on them, but there's time to times when you feel that the brakes don't feel right, get it in the shop and have the shop look at it, please. Like I say, all the suspension system, all the airlines, make sure that they're all secure, they're not chafed, they're not broken, they're not cut. Make sure that your locking pins are fully extended before you move the trailer. Again, tires, they need to be at least two thirty seconds of an inch tread depth on these tires. That includes the uh, tandem tires at the back of the trailer. You need to check through the spacer, make sure it's clear, there's no obstructions, there's no debris. You need to check all three sides of each trailer to make sure that they are no cuts, abrasions, bulges, that they're secure. Again, you're going to check your rim, make sure that the tire is properly set on the rim. There's no cracks, there's no welds. You're going to check your hub. 
make sure that the hub has oil. It has a window on these hubs, and you can check and see if it's if these, for any reason, need more lubrication. It needs to be added to. You need to get it to the shop. These trailers are equipped with a crossover air system. This crossover air system is a sealed system, and the only person who can really work on it is a certified mechanic. If you have any problems with that, you need to get it into a certified mechanic at one of our shops or wherever you find the problem and get it done. Crossover lines, they must be there and secure. No air leaks and no missing air lines. These traders are equipped with the crossover system. It's required that that is equipped equipment on the truck, then it needs those crossover lines to make the system operational. Okay, you'll do both axles the same. You're gonna check your lines. You're gonna check all your framing. Make sure there's no breaks, no cuts, no welds. You're gonna come back to your mud flap Make sure your mud flap is there and properly fastened. Your ABS light, your clearance light, you need to make sure that these are attached and operating properly. ABS light's gonna be amber, the running lights are gonna be red. Okay, now we're at the back of the trailer. What you wanna do back here is you wanna make that sure that all the doors are secured the hinges, there's no brakes, brakes in them, no loose bolts. The trailer don't back doors are properly secured with the latches. You'll notice at the top of the trailer, there's reflective tape in the corners. That's DOT regulation. You'll also notice at the top, there's three lights, red in color and properly secured. Those are what's known in the old days as ICC lights. They're required on box trucks. Your safety bar, your ICC bumper is what they call this in the old days. It must be properly secured, no missing nuts, no missing bolts. DOT reflective tape across 100%. Same with the bottom of the door. It needs to be 100% tape across the bottom, okay? Your lights, make sure your lights are functioning. Red in color, properly secured. You're gonna have brake lights, you're gonna have emergency flashers, you're gonna have turn signals. Make sure that they're all working properly. Your door securement, you go around, hook up your door. Latches, all secure. You have your license plate. You have a light that reflects on that license plate at night when you turn the power on. That light must be operational. They need to be able, I think the DOT regulation is 25 feet behind this trailer at night, they should be able to see that license plate. I think that pretty well wraps up the pre-trip inspection. What we we'll wanna do is we wanna continue it on through down the right side of this trailer to make sure that everything is good. The exhaust system, the end of the exhaust system is on the right side of the trailer. You want to make sure that you get to that and check for any leaking. The importance of no leaking in the exhaust system is you're inside that cab at night, you're resting. An exhaust leak can be fatal. Make sure that you don't have any soot or any signs of any kind of leakage coming from the exhaust system. I think that pretty well wraps up the outside of the truck. We'll go in and do an in-cab check. Okay, we are going to start the in-cab portion of our, of our uh, pre-trip. What you want to do is when you want to get in the truck, you want to look around on the floors, on all the overheads, make sure that there's nothing that, no obstructions that can fall out of there and hit you or strike you. There's nothing on the floor that can get underneath the pedals to cause any kind of problem with your braking or, or um, acceleration. We'll move to our gauges. We make sure, fuel gauge, we make sure we got plenty of fuel to take whatever trip we're gonna take. Adequate depth. We wanna make sure that our coolant temperature is coming up. That way we know that this gauge is working. Check our RPMs, our MPH, our miles per hour, which we'll, we cannot test until we get on the road. 
We're also going to check our oil level, make sure that our oil is within adequate parameters. We're going to check our primary and secondary air and make sure that it's come up to, to the proper level. Also on these trucks you have an indicator for your fuel filter. When your fuel filter comes up and it starts getting full, that'll come around and you'll end up getting a red warning light state showing you that you need to uh, take the time and have your fuel filter checked. Okay, we're going to check our windshield, make sure that the seals are properly in place. We're going to check that there's no cracks, there's no obstructions in the window that's going to cause us any problem with our vision. We're going to check our mailers. We're going to check to make sure that they're properly secured and that they're adjusted to our specifications. Each individual, you're going to have to readjust the mirrors so that you can get a proper vision behind you. We're going to check the windows, make sure that the windows are secured, they're not cracked, they're not broken. We're going to also check our windshield wipers, make sure that our windshield wipers are adequately operating, that our sprayers our windshield sprayer is working. And that our windshield wipers are have enough adequate tension to keep the windshield clear. We're also going to check our heater, our defroster, make sure that they operate properly. We're going to make sure that we're getting blow out through the windshield and down off the floor. I'm not going to turn that on today because we're here in northwest Arkansas and it's up and it's 80, 90 degrees. So just remember, check your defroster. Horns. Our road horn. Our city horn. They're operating properly. Also, play in your steering wheel. How does the steering wheel feel? Does it feel like it's too loose? If it is, you need to have it checked. Okay. Your seat belt. Make sure your seat belt is clear of any obstructions. It comes around easy. It easily secures. And at least it easily unsecures when needed. Okay. We went through the safety equipment that was underneath the bunk already. You want to examine, you want to get familiar with all your gauges, your lights, your kingpin release, your air dump, your fifth wheel slide, your inner axle differential lock. Okay, also, what you need to do on this is to check your voltage. And to do that on the 579 Peterbilts, you need to turn this knob until you get to the gauges screen. Push the big button there, and then you turn it. Okay, it says right now that our main battery batteries are at 62% charge. We continue to turn that until we get to our volt voltage. It shows that our alternator is putting out 14 volts at this time, which is adequate. Between 13.5 and 14.5 is an adequate charge level. Okay, now we're going to check all of our lights from the inside. We're going to turn them on. We're going to check our high beams, low beams, left turn signal, I mean right turn signal, left turn signal, our four-way flashers, and those are all operating properly. Okay. Now comes the most important part, is your air brake check. Now what we want to do is we are coupled to the trailer. We physically look to see that it was secure. Now we're going to do what's known as a tug test. Release your main brakes. Keep your secondary valve out. And then you just give a tug to make sure that you're secure to that trailer. Okay, now what we're going to do at this point is we're going to check our truck brake. 
okay make sure that our trailer see will hold the truck when the brake is when the trailer brake is set okay now what we want to do is we want to go forward at approximately five miles an hour and get it check the brakes to make sure that the trailer's stopping evenly and that there's no problem with one brake or the other okay at this point what we're going to do is we're going to do a air brake check of the main braking system what we're going to do at this time is we're going to let our release the brake we're in neutral release the brake release the trailer and the truck brake now if you were not on level ground you would chalk the wheels to make sure that you won't roll anywhere but now we are on level ground we're sitting steady what we're going to do is we're going to let the air build up to about 120 pounds psi okay 120 and what we're going to do is we're going to shut the engine off now we're going to turn it back on. We're not going to start the truck. We're going to turn it back on and let the air level come back up and wait until it settles. Okay, the pressure has equalized. At this point, what we're going to do is we're going to mash down on the brake and hold it for a minute to make sure we're not losing any more than four PSI per minute. We're not leaking any more air, so we're going to forego the full minute. Okay. Now at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to start fanning our brakes until we get our air alarms on our valves. And this should occur to 80 to 60 PSI. There we go. We got the lights indicating the air is leaking, and then we also show that you heard the bell the warning bell okay we're going to continue to fan until our safety valves pop out and this should occur between 40 and 20 psi there we go okay both pop we know that our air service is complete and it's safe that we can be able to make a stop when we need to make a stop we're not going to have to guess if the brakes are going to hold or not. Okay, we'll start the engine back up. Okay, and at this point, we'd air our trailer back up and we get ready to go out on the road. That should pretty much explain to you what we're expecting and what you should be doing during your pre-trip. Your pre-trip is vital to the point that anything that you can find wrong with the truck while you're stationary Get it fixed so it doesn't leave you out on the road stranded. Thank you.